All right, y'all. Beef ribs today. Beef short ribs. Right here. Chuck beef short ribs. This is some good eating. If you've never had beef short ribs, don't be intimidated. It's like eating one of the best ribeyes that you've ever had in your life. Like it is some of the best eating that you'll ever have. Is it to me? It's one of my favorites. Right next to brisket, the point on a brisket. This is some good eating. So, without further ado, let's open this thing up and uh, let's get this party started. If you notice, you've got on this one four bones. One, two, three, four. There's a slight membrane on the back, some good fat in here, and as you can see, it's got some good marbling. We'll do a little trim work on this one to get them cleaned up. So let me get these out of here. Let me get these cleaned up, and we shall be right back. What we're gonna do is on these on beef ribs, I always like to take off the membrane. Um, and you can just use a knife, a fork, whatever. Pork ribs, uh, I'll leave it on there. It's not a deal breaker, but with beef ribs, with beef ribs, I think you gotta take this membrane off. And it's tough, man. So you gotta get a good grip on it. Just get a good grip on that membrane and take it right on off. There you go. Cause this stuff right here is like shoe leather. You, you definitely not going. You're not going to chew through that. That's just not going to happen. All right, we're good to go. On this side, I am going to trim a little bit of this fat off. Some of this hard fat like that. You can hear it. That's not going to render that great. I'm not going to go too crazy on them. I do want some fat on them. If you want, of course, you could trim it all the way. Trim all the fat off. But you just have to be careful and not dig into the meat. So let me trim these up and I'll be right back. All right, guys, if you see, we've trimmed them down a little bit. Just know that there's gonna be a little bit of trim work on there. You've got some silver skin and things like that that sit on top of these beef ribs. So you definitely wanna get some of that off. A lot of this hard fat is kind of woven into the meat. So take, you can take some of it off, but I definitely wouldn't take all of it off because you don't wanna start digging dents and, 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 and holes in your meat like I kind of did right here. Let's go on to the next step. Let's flip these bad boys over. And uh, I'm going on with some meat glue. AKA a light coat of mustard. Totally optional, you don't have to do this. Again, you can always use olive oil, any kind of cooking oil. But these beef ribs are kind of dry, so you're gonna have to put something on them to you know, keep them moist. So that, so that basically so that your rub can stick. Right, that's the muscle. Now I'm using my uh, gourmet grilling dust. It's got a lot of good stuff in it, like cilantro, dried onion, stuff like that. And it has a good bit of salt in it. Cause you know my motto, whenever you cook, salt should always hit the meat first before you use any kind of rub. Well, this rub is loaded with salt. So that premise is out the door. And I'm going on, I'm gonna go on pretty heavy on both sides. Get it on there, pack it on there, all sides. All sides of the bone. You got good meat on each, each end of the bone. Season it up real good. All right, now that we've got the bone side season. Let's flip it over. And of course, we're gonna do the same thing on this side, a little mustard, AKA meat glue. And then we're going back on this side. Heavy coat, man. You want some good bark on these beef ribs. These things gonna take a while to cook. We're gonna probably cook them for about six hours. So they're gonna sit in the pit for a while. Um, 
Will we wrap them? I'm still up for debate on whether or not I'm gonna wrap them. If I do wrap them, I'm probably gonna wrap them in butcher paper um, and not foil. I want the, the butcher paper to absorb a lot of this fat and help keep the meat moist as opposed to using aluminum foil, which is more likely just gonna steam it out and mess up your bark. Because this is gonna have a lot of bark on it. And that's it, that's all we're gonna do. Season, I'm gonna let them sit here for probably about 30 minutes, come up to room temperature. The salt and sugars is gonna absorb in the meat. And next step is on the pit. Y'all stay tuned. Right, y'all, we getting ready. I got a combination of lump charcoal and just regular old briquettes down there. And guess what? We're gonna break out the pellet tube again, but this time we're gonna use the charcoal and hickory brand from uh, Cowboy and let that swirl around these uh, beef ribs all day long. So y'all stay tuned. Beef ribs on the way. You can see I've got a small pan in there. I'm gonna add some water to it, but this pan is really just to help catch a lot of this grease that's gonna come off these beef ribs. So I don't have to do a lot of grill cleanup. But I am gonna add some moisture to the cooking chamber. And I'm also gonna go ahead and light up my smoke too for these pellets. So y'all stay tuned, we almost ready to start cooking. All right, as you can see to light these pellets, I just added a little bit of wax cube in there and lit that. And uh, in 10 minutes, we should be good to go with these pellets. All right, look at that beautiful meat, y'all. Things is ready to go. So they getting ready to go on the pit. All right, got water pan is in place, smoke tube is in place. And now the meat. All right, y'all, we got the meat in place, smoke tube rocking, water pan rocking. I'm gonna try to keep this joker right around, maybe about 290, 300, no more than that. And uh, four hours later, we should see what we got. I'm smoking for about four and I might wrap the rest of the way, so. Y'all stay tuned. Beef short ribs. Yeah, boy. Three hours in. I was smoke pellet smoking tube is still going, but look at the color on them ribs, man. Three hours in, baby. Got some drippings and some water down there, but so far so good, man. We're gonna let it keep on rolling. Stay tuned. Four hours in. Look at that. Beautiful, man. Water pan dried up on them, but that's okay. I'm gonna let them keep on rocking for one more hour. I think I'm going to wrap them up. Smoke tube look like it has caput on me. But it's all good. Y'all stay tuned. Beef rib, short rib. Yeah, boy. So we are at five hours. Look at them things. Beautiful. Let me back up a little bit. Great pull back on the bones. You can see it pulled in a little bit on top. So I'm going to take these off and go wrap these in some butcher paper. So we'll show you the next step. All right, what I have here is some garlic infused liquid margarine. This is totally optional, you don't have to do this. But I'm just gonna rub it on this butcher paper. I just wanna see if this is gonna infuse some more flavor on the meat side uh, of these ribs because I'm gonna turn the meat side down. Um, hopefully it'll, I'm hoping it will add some more flavor uh, to the meat side of these ribs. So totally optional. Should be good to go. All right, these bones are fresh off the pit. Gonna take them. I just wanna look at one of them real quick. Uh, this butcher paper is plenty greasy. I flipped the meat side down, but if you can, as you can see, I mean, it's plenty of fat other than what I put in here with that liquid margin. But we got some good pullback on the bones. Bones look real good. Let's get a look at the front. Yeah, that's looking real good. So, you know, I think I'm just gonna let them sit here and rest. And then we'll cut them. <laughs> yeah, boy. All right, we let them rest for about 20, 25 minutes. Nice and juicy. You can look at this butcher paper and tell it's a lot of moisture, a lot of fat. Let's go ahead and cut this one in the middle. Get this thing a peek real quick. Just need a real nice sharp knife. Look at that. Good and juicy. Nice smoke ring, nice bark. Taste. That's it, y'all. So as always, y'all, I want to thank y'all for joining me here on the Rolling Grill. Good food, good vibes. Yeah, boy.